Good day to you from the Midbury Church of Christ. I'm Jess Carter talking to you here from my office. I'm talking to you today about the Alpha and the Omega. Another way of saying the, the Christ. Christ is the beginning and he is the end. In that he is not somebody that God sent to the world and the world begun there on the Bethlehem. I get so so tickled that a lot of people look at, at Jesus and said, where did he begin? Well, Jesus did not begin. He did not start uh, in Bethlehem. That's where he was sent to earth. Uh, John 3.16, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He gave him because he had them. In John, I would like for you to turn with me to the Gospel of John. And you could see in John, there was people beginning to say that Jesus was just a man, that he was a rabbi. Even today, the, the, those of the Jewish religion I'd like to point out and say, well, Jesus just was a, a, a rabbi that got, you know, those people that followed him got to saying these things about him. But who was Jesus? Well, Jesus was somebody that was with God from the very beginning. In John chapter 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Uh, that the word there is capitalized because that's a that's a person he's talking about. It says there in verse two, he was in the beginning with God. All things was made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of man, and the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. In the beginning, in the beginning was the Word. Years ago, when I first became a Christian, I was very zealous. In Sapopo, Oklahoma, I worked at a, a glass plant. There, working at the glass plant, a young man, I would always take tracts and hand them to people that I worked with, trying to share the good news of Jesus with them. One of the older men there that worked, I gave him a, a, a track one time, and he wanted to talk to me at kind of a law time one time. He came to me and he said, Carter, I want to ask you something. How many gods do you believe in? I said, <laughs> I knew the answer there. Very confident. I said, there's one God. He said, the Bible doesn't teach that. I kind of looked. He said, I want you to look and, and take your Bible. I carried a New Testament with my lunchbox, but he said, get home and, and look in your Bible. And, and you will see that the Bible talks about there being more than one God. He said, take your Bibles and, and open it up to Genesis 1, there in verse 26, and read. So I went home that night and I read it. And this is to what I read. It said this. It says, then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle, over all the earth. I looked at that and said, let God, what? And God said, let us. Boy, that blew me away as a young man. Oh, I went to one of the brethren there that did some preaching. One of my old, uh, my old teachers, Brother Don Sims, a great man of faith. I asked him, I said, Don, the Bible says there's more than one God. And I showed him, I opened it up, and he said, oh, Carter, he said, let me show you. And he showed me because I was of the impression that Jesus Christ began in Bethlehem. Jesus did not begin in Bethlehem. That's when he came to earth. He was the Son of God. He wasn't the son of God created in Bethlehem. He was, the crea he was the son of God that was with God from the very beginning. And he was sent down to that time. Matter of fact, in John 1, and you keep on reading, it says, um, verse, let's just read 11, 12, and 13 of John 1. And he came to his own, and his, his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, he gave, he gave the right to become children of God to those who believe in his name, who was born not of the blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. Jesus Christ, that man, that person, that being that was born of a virgin, 
because of the will of God. Matter of fact, we can look and see about Christ if we look at Colossians. In Colossians 1, beginning in verse 13, I'd like for you to look at that one. Well, we go back to 12. I like 12. Colossians there, 1, beginning in verse in 12, it says, Give me thanks to the Father who have qualified us to be protectors of the inheritance of the saint in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and converted us, or well, the King James has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. We have been what? Translated, transferred. We have been into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over, he is the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things was created that are in the heaven and that are on the earth, visible and invisible, whatever where the thrones or dominions or principality or powers. All things was created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things consist. And he is the head of, of the body, the church, who is the beginning of the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence. Christ is that founder. Matter of fact, time is running short, but I want you to look at 1 Corinthians 15, 24, and 25. Because it's important there for us to look and realize there what it says about Christ. We, He is the head of, of the body, the church. We saw that in Colossians. Look in 1 Corinthians 15, if you would. There in verse 24. Talking about Christ. It says, Then cometh the end, when he, that is Christ, delivered the kingdom to God the Father, when he put an end to all rules and authorities and power. For he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. Christ is now ruling. Matter of fact, Revelation 1 and 8, and also in Revelation 22, is that, that says that Christ is the Alpha and the Omega. Christ was with God in the beginning. And Christ is with God at the right hand of the throne of God now. And he is reigning over his church. And he at the end, at the end, he's going to come and claim his own. And we all can be with him. He is the Alpha. He is the Omega. He is the beginning. He is the end. Where are you going to spend the end? We call that eternity. I pray if we can help you in any way, help you that you might be spend eternity. You might spend the end, the Omega, with Jesus Christ and God Almighty. God be with you till we meet again.